Hello beautiful people and welcome to the channel Life After Narc. My name's Debbie and I talk about all things to do with narcissistic, abusive and toxic relationships as well as looking at healing from them. In today's video, the two G's of a narcissistic relationship. Before I get into the body of the relationship, I just want to remind you that this is for entertainment purposes only. And if you enjoy the video, please click the like button. Please subscribe to the channel and share with your friends, family, anyone who you think may benefit. So the two G's of a narcissistic relationship. Now, I decided to put these two emotions together um, as part of the recovery process from a narcissistic relationship, as I found these two to be very uh, prominent in my own healing. So the two G's are grief and guilt. Now, as I say, they fit into the healing process, but they also appear in the actual relationship itself. And I feel that guilt, I'm going to tackle guilt first. Um, you feel guilty within the narcissistic relationship very often. The narcissist makes you feel guilty or elicits a response in you to feel guilty because you didn't do something that they wanted you to do. The narcissist has a certain level of expectation from you in, in, as their partner, and they want you to be perfect for them. Whatever their ideal of perfection is, they want you to be that perfect person. Now, we all know that perfection doesn't exist. We are perfectly imperfect. And it's very important that we start to accept that in our lives, especially women. And I'm speaking to the women out there now, especially around about my age, middle aged, who are going through menopause. Our bodies change, our faces change. We start to look at our bodies and think, what happened? Where have I gone? I've disappeared. This, this young person that I was, this felt beautiful person that I was has changed. But you know what? It doesn't matter. We are still that person inside. And love is not about the outside of the package. It's about the whole package. But unfortunately, a narcissist only works from the outside of the package. So during the love bombing phase of a relationship, everything is wonderful. And we, you know, I've talked about this in other videos. I'm going to put a link to the four stages of a narcissistic relationship in the description box below. It's a recent video I've done. Um, but the guilt comes in later on during the devaluation phase of the relationship. This is when the narcissist really starts to pick at us, poke at us, make us feel less than. So they will compare us to porn, for example. They will compare us to a woman on the street. They will compare us to a rock star or a movie star. And you can never be that person unless you are a rock star or a movie star, you know, but the vast majority of us are just normal people with normal bodies trying to live a normal life. And as we know, in a narcissistic relationship, the um, mental and emotional processes we go through create illness and disease within the body. And, you know, that can lead to weight loss or weight gain, depending on the type of person that you are. So I want you to bear that in mind as we talk about these two G's within the narcissistic relationship. So guilt comes in, um, especially with a controlling narcissist. Perhaps you've burned or spoiled a meal that you were cooking, you were really looking forward to, or you made a cake and the middle flops. And it's happened to me before and I just put buttercream on top to make it straight. But you feel guilty because you weren't fulfilling your potential as a partner. Now, these guilty feelings stem from a much earlier time in your life, a time in your life when you were perhaps being abused and you weren't even aware of it at the time. This comes from being a child with your family members or with friends or with teachers. That's for a different video. Perhaps you feel guilty because you didn't do the housework on that day because you were feeling unwell. You know, I have a hiatus hernia and some days when it's really, really bad, I struggle to move, to get out of bed, let alone go and get myself something to eat or something to drink. And as I said, it makes you feel unwell 
not just em uh, emotionally and mentally, but physically as well. And as we go on in our relationship, and depending on the length of time you spent with that person, our bodies change over time as we become older women. Our bodies become more voluptuous, more rounded, and especially those of us who've had children. And we feel guilty because we don't look like the person we did when they met us. And they may not say as much that, oh, what happened to you? Sometimes the words that they say can spark those feelings. At the end of the relationship, you feel guilty even more so um, because you believe it was all your fault. If you'd have only been slimmer, if you'd have only cooked that cake and cooked that meal and didn't burn it, if only you'd have done the housework, even though you were in absolute agony writhing on the floor. There's always these if onlys and we feel that guilt. And that's an empathic feeling to have, but it's also a wrong feeling to have. It's also a feeling that we need to acknowledge, but also accept and go, OK, I put that aside because I'm imperfect. I am perfectly imperfect and I can't change that. We can only be what we are. We can't be something we aren't. We're not in a movie. We're not playing a character in a movie. We are ourselves. And uh, in that relationship, we were so busy putting everybody else's needs first that, that we forgot about us. We forgot about our needs. Now, when we look at grief within the relationship and, and we often have experienced grief within that narcissistic relationship, and it may be at times where you are crying for what was previously in the love bombing phase and again this comes in the devaluation and discard phase but you are crying for what you had you had this what you thought was an amazing relationship but turns out it was all lies so you're grieving the lie you're grieving these feelings that you had right back at the beginning um you may not have even recognized it as grief it may just have been an emotion that perhaps you felt angry with yourself, perhaps you felt, um, you know, disillusioned with yourself, that you weren't meeting the expectations that the narcissistic person in your life wanted you to reach. As I say, you hid this grief from yourself and you put it in a box, put it to the side, sent it on its way because you had to be this person to make sure that this narcissist stayed with you because you loved them. So grief within the relationship can come from the loss of friends or family as the narcissist isolates you and takes you away from them and doesn't want you to visit them anymore, doesn't want you to spend time with them anymore. There's a lot of instances where um, in a narcissistic relationship where the woman will go out for a night out perhaps with her girlfriends and the narcissist follows her or tracks her and doesn't trust her. That's generally because they would be doing the things that they expect their partner to do, cheating and so on. But as an empath, it's very unlikely that you're going to do that. Grief for the person that you were before the narcissist. Now, I know that I grieve that person, that body that I was. But now I can look at myself whole. And say, you know what? I was that person before the relationship. I was that person in the relationship. And now I am this person with all of these traits. And I'm a much better, much more fulfilled, much rounded person. And then grief when you begin to see the cracks forming in your relationship with the narcissist. And I remember it was winter and uh, my dad was ill and I was at home here. And um, I just had this feeling of needing to get away, of, of getting my tents, getting my cats, getting what camping equipment I had, which to be honest is quite a lot, and leaving and just finding a field somewhere to go and live in because I couldn't bear to be here any longer. But then something stopped me, my feelings and love for the narcissist in a twisted way. So at the end of the relationship, these two emotions, 
they feel like constant passengers with you on your back. And it can be incredibly difficult to get rid of these two emotions, but that's okay because you're on a healing journey now. And healing is not linear. It doesn't go in a straight line. You go backwards and forwards, up and down, and that's okay. It really is okay. You've lost this person, this person that you thought was your best friend, your lover, the partner that you were going to spend the rest of your life with. So you're grieving. And as you know, grieving comes with major emotions throughout it. And these emotions don't have to be as in a process or a specific order. They can happen at different times. So you'll have denial. This can't be happening. Anger. What have I done? What have you done? Bargaining. Please come back to me. You know, let's sort this out. Depression. Um, sadness, guilt, of course, the guilt's in there. What could you have done to sort this out? Shock. And finally, at the very end, acceptance. And we look at radical acceptance within the narcissistic abusive relationship after it's over. And I'll put a link to radical acceptance video that I've done recently in the description box below as well. These two emotions hold on to each other so tightly in that relationship. It's almost as if they become one. And as I say, guilt is found within the grieving process anyway. And it creates massive distress within our body. And mostly you'll find it happening in your stomach, in your chest, in your throat. You'll feel these top three um, parts of your body so tight, so tense that... You can't breathe. You're not getting the breath. You can't speak. And your stomach goes into knots and butterflies. And that's all stress. That's all related to guilt. They will dissipate over time. I promise you, they will. Guilt and grief will always be in your life through other things and uh, um, situations that happen to you. But they will dissipate from your life with the narcissist once you have left or they have left you, once you practice that radical acceptance. And you will shed these two like a snake sheds its skin. And you will become the new version of you, the version of you that is worthy, the, the version of you that feels no guilt, that has no grief for that past relationship or that past you, because you're better now. You are better than you ever were before because you've learned. You have this knowledge from this past relationship. It'll be a challenge. It'll take time. But I know you can do it. So if you've enjoyed the video, please click the like button. Please subscribe to the channel and share the video with your friends and family, anyone who you think may benefit. And I hope to see you next time. Blessed be.